At Husqvarna, we have always listened carefully to professional chainsaw users. Our aim is to take their experience and build it into our products. We want to be able to meet their ambitious demand for efficiency, safety, ergonomics, and to fulfill their wish not to cause unnecessary harm to the environment. In this way, we have built up an extensive knowledge bank over the years, and we want to share it. Because even if you only use your saw once in a while, you can benefit a lot from knowing how the professional users do it. The advice we give you is general. There may be specific regulations in your country, and it's imperative that you follow them. The saw's appearance and the placement of its controls can vary according to the model. Always read the instructions before you start using the saw. The chainsaw is an efficient tool, but it can also be dangerous if used incorrectly. That's why safety must always come first. Your clothing is a very important part of this. Even if you're just cutting some firewood outside the back door of your house, you must use the personal protective equipment that is required in your country. The best items of equipment are highly visible, ventilated protective jacket and trousers fitted with saw protection. Of course, protective equipment cannot prevent an accident from occurring, but it can help to reduce the extent of the injury. You should also have boots with a steel toe cap, saw protection, and a heavy tread. And a helmet, of course, with a full coverage visor and hearing protection. Make sure you've got a first aid kit readily accessible, and it's a good idea to carry a mobile phone and a whistle so that you can call for help easily if something happens. Protect your hands with a pair of strong gloves, and if possible, bring someone with you when you work, especially if you're inexperienced. Take your time to get acquainted with the saw so that you have a good idea of how it works and so you know its most important parts, in particular the ones that have to do with safety. The throttle control is on the inside of the rear handle. To prevent accidental throttle advance when you squeeze the throttle control, you must also depress the throttle lock on the top of the handle. On the bottom of the saw is the chain catcher, which catches the chain if it breaks or derails. If such an accident with the chain were to occur, your right hand would be protected by the right hand guard on the bottom of the handle. With the easy access stop control, you can stop the engine quickly. The chain brake stops the chain in the event of a kickback. It can be triggered in two ways. One, by the user's hand pushing the kickback protection forward, and two, by the inertial forces that arise during a kickback. Kickback can occur during most types of operations due to lack of care. It's when the force of the rotating chain throws the saw in line with the bar, usually upwards and backwards. Kickback is caused by the saw contacting something with the upper part of the bar nose. Never make the saw kick back intentionally. If the chain isn't new, it might be a good idea to file it, since cutting is both easier and safer when the chain is sharp. Also, make sure the chain is tensioned properly. Don't forget that a new chain should always be retensioned after operating the saw for a short period. When filling the saw with fuel and chain oil, place the saw on a stable surface. To reduce dangerous emissions, choose environmental petrol and vegetable-based chain oil. The overfill protection helps you avoid unnecessary spillage, and considering the risk of fires, you should always move the saw before starting it. It's good to work together with someone, but make sure they're at least five meters away when you start to use the saw. When felling trees, this distance should be far greater. 
When you're ready to start, place the saw flat on the ground and clear the area around the bar. Activate the chain brake by pushing the kickback protection forward, as otherwise the chain will start to rotate when the saw starts. Depress the smart start decompression control if the saw has this feature. If the engine is cold, pull the choke all the way out. Put your right foot part way through the rear handle and hold the front handle firmly with your left hand. Pull the starter handle with your right hand until the engine starts. Now push the choke in again with the throttle on halfway. Continue to pull the starter handle until the saw starts. Hit the throttle once so that the engine speed drops to idle. If the engine's already warm, don't use the choke, but the other steps are the same. If the saw's difficult to start despite being warm, pull out the choke like you do during the cold start, but push it back in right away. When you've got the saw started, don't disengage the chain brake until you're ready to saw. Now check that the chain brake works. Place the saw on a stable surface and squeeze the throttle. Activate the chain brake by pushing your left wrist against the kickback protection without releasing the handle. The chain should stop straight away. Also check the chain lubrication. Hold the saw against something light in color such as a stump and hit the throttle. A line of oil should then be visible on the surface. If you're not used to using a chainsaw, we recommend that you first get acquainted with the saw by practicing a while on a suitable log. There are some basic rules for using a chainsaw. Hold it firmly in both handles and hold your thumbs and fingers right around the handles. Make sure you hold your left thumb under the front handle to reduce the force of a possible kickback. It's good to have respect for the saw, but don't be afraid of it. If you hold it close to your body, it won't feel as heavy, and you'll be more balanced and in better control of the saw. For the best balance, stand with your feet apart. You can saw with both the upper and the lower edge of the bar. When using the lower edge, you're sawing with the pulling chain, which means that the chain pulls the saw away from you. Using the upper edge of the chain, you're sawing with the pushing chain, and the chain pushes the saw towards you. Protect your back by not working in a bent over position. Bend your knees instead if you're working at a low level. When moving, make sure the chain is not rotating by activating the chain brake or turning off the engine. For longer distances, of course, use the bar guard. Before felling any trees, find out which environmental regulations apply and make sure that you have the necessary permits. When you've decided to fell a tree, you should think about what you can do to prevent accidents. Take note of everything that can affect safety. Are there any roads, overhead lines or buildings nearby? If so, and you're a beginner, you should leave the job to someone with more experience. If you know that people often pass through the area, you should set up warning signs. Assess the tree and take note of the various factors that can affect the felling. Is the tree leaning? Which way is the wind blowing? Considering the surroundings and ease of subsequent work, which direction should it be felled in? Make sure that there are no people within the safety radius, which is at least twice the length of the tree that you intend to fell. Stand by the tree and decide exactly which direction you want it to fall in. Choose a feature from the surroundings as a guide. Clear obstructive undergrowth from around the tree. Remove branches and other obstacles on the ground. 
On both sides of the tree, you should be able to walk unobstructed at an angle away from the falling tree and remain there at a safe distance. The general idea of directional felling is that you first saw a directional notch which determines which direction the tree will fall. The directional notch can be made in a variety of ways. The one we're showing here is called the open directional notch. Firstly, you make a top cut into the stem at an angle of about 60 degrees. Saw to a depth of about 20 to 25 percent of the tree's diameter. Then make a horizontal undercut to meet the top cut. Next, you saw a horizontal felling cut slightly above the level of the undercut. It's important that you stop sawing just before you reach the directional notch, leaving what is called a hinge. The hinge guides the tree as it falls. The hinge should be 10% of the tree's diameter, or at least 2 centimeters wide. How you use the saw when felling is decided in part by the thickness of the tree. First, let's look at what you do when the bar is longer than the diameter of the tree. Stand with your legs apart and lean against the tree trunk with your shoulder. To avoid an unnecessarily high stump, make the directional notch low. Hold the saw at the correct angle and sight towards the physical feature in the surroundings that you selected. It should coincide with the felling sights on the top of the saw. Give the saw a full throttle and start sawing. From time to time, check that you're keeping the correct angle and direction. Stay in the same position and make the undercut. Make sure that you meet the top cut exactly. Now it's time for the felling cut. Use either a pushing or a pulling chain. Saw until you have enough room to push in a breaking bar. Make sure you don't touch the breaking bar with the chain when you continue sawing. Leave a hinge that is as even in thickness as possible. Remove the saw and work the bar until the tree starts to fall. The breaking bar is a felling tool for smaller trees. It prevents the tree from falling in the wrong direction and from pinching the blade while sawing. Now let's look at what you do with a larger tree. Just like before, you create a good working environment. You might need to remove some of the branches from the bottom of the trunk. The safest way to do this is with a pulling chain, moving from above downwards. Use the trunk as a protection between you and the saw. Never prune higher than shoulder height. If the tree has buttress roots, it may be easier if you remove them. Here, the bar is shorter than the diameter of the trunk, so a slightly more complicated felling technique is required. If you're not particularly experienced, it's wise to have somebody with you who is. As the bar doesn't reach through the trunk, you have to complete the directional notch from the other side. Make sure that the new cuts meet up with the old ones as closely as possible. What you're going to do now is called a plunge cut. With full throttle, start by inserting the lower part of the bar nose into the trunk, just behind the intended hinge. Be careful not to touch the tree with the upper part of the bar nose. When the tip of the saw has moved into the trunk a little bit, turn the saw carefully until it is parallel with the directional notch. Press the bar into the tree. Then saw away from the hinge a small distance, approximately the width of the bar. This is to prevent you from sawing into the hinge when you turn the saw around. Saw carefully around the trunk. 
When you've passed the middle, insert a felling wedge, which is the best tool for felling large trees. Keep sawing until the bar is parallel with the directional notch on the other side. If the tree has rot damage, you have to be very careful and preferably get help from an experienced person if you're not that skilled yourself. If the trunk looks damaged or abnormal, there may be a rot problem. The rotten section of the tree is miscoloured and feels spongy. As rot weakens the tree, you have to make the hinge bigger to get the tree to fall safely. You should also get assistance from someone with experience if the tree gets stuck in another tree on the way down. Don't leave the tree unguarded if you have to call for help. Now it's time for limbing. Work calmly and methodically as it's easy to get kickbacks. Try to place the trunk so that you can work between waist and knee height. Stand to the left of the trunk and work from the base of the tree upwards. Stand firmly with your feet apart and keep the saw close to your body. Work with both a pulling and a pushing chain and always try to rest the saw on the trunk or against your hip. Take care not to contact branches with the upper part of the bar nose. Only move when you have the trunk between yourself and the bar of the saw. Branches on the upper side of the trunk can be cut with the saw lying on its side. You can limb the branches on the underside of the trunk at the same time as the rest if you have a good working height. If the tree has large branches, they can be under great tension, in which case you should limb them from the outside and in towards the trunk. Saw with the bar held vertically to reduce the risk of it getting caught. If the branch is very large, you might have to cut it from two sides. Observe how the branches are tensioned so that you can saw them from the correct side, otherwise there is a risk that the saw will get caught. If the tree is lying right on the ground, you'll have to wait with the branches on the bottom until you're finished with the others and can roll the trunk over. Be careful when the trunk is close to the ground since there's quite a risk that you'll touch something with the tip of the bar which will cause a kickback. Now you've got cross-cutting left. Study the tree before you start, especially if the trunk is thick. First, try to see how it's tensioned. Watch how the trunk reacts when you start to saw. You might have misjudged the tension. Stand off to the side of the cut since the trunk can jump up when it comes apart. Never stand below the trunk if the ground is sloping. If the trunk lies so that the pressure comes from above, start with a cut from above. Saw about one third of the way through the trunk or until it starts to pinch the bar. Then cut from underneath to meet the first cut. If instead the trunk lies so that the pressure comes from below, you work the other way round. Start by sawing from underneath about one third of the way through the trunk or until it starts to pinch the bar. Then cut from above to meet the first cut. If the bar gets stuck, don't try to pull out the saw. Instead, stop the engine, bend open the trunk until the saw comes loose. When you've finished work, it's a good idea to take a look at your saw to make sure it's functioning properly, is safe and ready to go the next time you need it. Of course, maintenance requirements depend on how much you use the saw. Filing the chain is an important part of maintaining the saw and it's not difficult if you use Husqvarna's instructions and equipment. It's easiest if you file the chain relatively frequently. 
Fix the saw in place, lock the chain by activating the chain brake. Start with the cutting teeth. Place the file gauge on the chain with the arrows pointing towards the bar nose. Place the file at right angles to the rollers. File every second tooth with an even pushing stroke. Then turn the saw around and file the rest of the cutting teeth. About every third time you file the cutting teeth, file the depth gauges between them as well. Hold the file gauge steady with one hand, select hard or soft depending on which type of wood you normally saw, and file the depth gauge until the file contacts the file gauge. After a number of sharpenings, when the longest part of the cutting tooth is less than four millimeters, the chain should be replaced. Remove the bar and put the new chain in place. Adjust the chain tension carefully. A loose chain can jump off, and if it's too tight, it will wear out the bar. You should be able to lift the chain approximately one centimeter from the track at the middle of the bar, and it should be easy to pull the chain around by hand. When it comes to other maintenance, there are a few parts that require cleaning now and then. Remove the clutch cover and clean the chain brake band. You should also clean the bar occasionally. Remove the cylinder cover and wash the air filter. Clean the cooling fins and the air intake if necessary. Check periodically that the flywheel fins are clean to ensure good engine cooling. There are other things that should be checked periodically to make sure that they're working as they should. In particular, the chain brake, throttle control and chain catcher. Also check that the chain lubrication hole isn't blocked and that the chain drive wheel is whole and not too worn. See that screws, bolts and nuts are tightened. Read more about service in the saw's user's manual. We hope you've learned more about how to use a chainsaw properly. It might seem like a lot to take in, but with a little practice, you'll soon become competent with the saw. Try to bring along an experienced person at the beginning and study the user's manual and Husqvarna's manual on chainsaw techniques. We hope you'll enjoy using your saw and that you'll be satisfied with the results of your work.